how they respond to, to uh, angry emotional expressions, right? So what you do in this, this kind of work, you just present emotional faces and people have a, a joystick and you can either approach or avoid uh, certain stimuli. So what we know is that people, if you show people like, I know, uh, cupcakes and unicorns and happy faces, they tend to, you know, you have this, this appetitive uh, approach tendency, let's say. And if you, so, if you show people aversive stuff, like you know, mutilated body parts and angry faces, they tend to, they want to avoid that, right? You want to keep, keep a distance from it. So this is work that was conducted by a colleague of mine, um, she was a lead um, researcher in that study. Um, and what she basically did was use these faces and try to, and she compared uh, psychopathic offenders to a control group. Um, and she was interested in the idea that it could be that these guys uh, don't, no, I mean, they, if they respond to threat differently, you should always see that to a certain extent in their, this approach avoidance tendency. So it turns out that the psychopathic offenders had a higher, uh, tendency to approach angry faces instead of avoiding them. If you're like a normal functioning individual, and <laughs> I would say whatever normal is, uh, you, you, I mean, you don't want people to be angry at you. You want to kind of take your distance, you know, let them be, uh, keep them happy. But these guys were actually actively approaching this negative, these, these angry uh, faces. From that level, I say from one neurobiological level, it could be that they're kind of hardwired not to respond to threat as, as intensely as someone else would do. They have the built-in mechanism, but the mechanism is kind of faulty. Um, that, I mean, you can imagine throughout the lifetime, you, you kind of accumulate all these experiences. And if you, if you consistently accumulate uh, information that's incorrect, at some point you will start reacting to it in a certain way as well. And then you have this established behavioral repertoire that say that this is difficult to correct when you when you grown up. So it had to do with social dominance. You see this in, in primates as well, right? So you see like in gorillas, and if you, if you showed aggression towards a gorilla or a bear, they will actually attack instead of run away from you. Um, perhaps because they know they're kind of you know, super predators or something. I mean, it kind of ties in with the idea that psychopath, the psychopath is a predator. It kind of you know, fits into that view. No, you don't threaten the predator. <laughs> you just look away and walk, walk out of the room. <laughs>
group of uh, philosophers of science uh, for the past few years. Um, and they became quite intrigued by, the, by this idea, right? So we've been focusing on, on the offender, like the worst case scenarios, but you also have these people walking around in general society. You hear from someone that, um, that complains about, no, this person they know is not empathic and destroys all these social relationships. So we talk about it, but people are not aware that this could be due to psychopathic tendencies. Not per se, but it could be. And the question is, how do you deal with these people in, in our current, the current structure of society? Um, so when we think about rehabilitation, then we think about changing something within the individual, right? So we basically want to uh, I don't know, improve the way of thinking or regulate emotions, regulate. So it's something, it's a person-centered approach. Uh, while the alternative, which for psychologists often is kind of like, no, it sounds strange when I say this, is that you can also think about changing the environment to a certain extent to kind of accommodate this person. That's not to say that you should not, that it's, you kind of make it okay to be psychopathic because there's a place for a psychopath somewhere. No, <laughs> that's not what you're saying. <laughs> right now, we don't have a very good treatment program for psychopathic offenders. And it's going to be a long road before we develop like tailored, like very effective uh, interventions. So what can we do in the meanwhile? So what you can do in the meanwhile, we propose, is that you can kind of shape the environment in a way that kind of accommodates them. So if you go look at the comp uh, corporate world, if you have the psychopathic, uh, this person with psychopathic uh, features walking around, kind of you know, kind of damaging others, uh, talking bad about colleagues uh, to achieve own goals and all these things, um, instead of trying to, it's very difficult to develop an intervention for someone in that setting because it's like, no, it's not an offender. It's just someone that functions in a, you no. Know, someone with a normal life, normal life uh, to a certain extent, and also that you no, know, just works there. So what you could do is instead of saying that, uh, you know, trying to come up with interventions for these guys, you can also try to, to change the type of jobs that you give them, right? So, so imagine that you come at, uh, you know, someone has been working for you for two or three years, right? So you know this person, destructive tendencies, difficult social relationships, not empathic, uh, but you cannot fire him for whatever reason. He's protected by the law or something. I don't know. Um, so what you could do is instead of making this person the manager, which no, usually is what they, they often want, you should try to uh, come up with a, a, some kind of job that kind of uh, reduces the impact of this person on his colleagues, but also gives them a purpose, like something to do. Right? So not a management function if it's something that's very manipulative, let them do something else that kind of no, doesn't involve this, this very intense social contract that you would need being a manager. Um, so these are some of the things we've been thinking about uh, lately as well to kind of no, come up with solutions that are not the ultimate solution, but could be intermediate solutions that are quite useful when you look at psychopathic traits in the community and not in offender settings.